ان الحمد لله وحده الصلاه والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم now in this session we are dealing with one of the important subject or one of the important theme that is uh, raising our children on good morality this is one of the fundamental responsibility upon the parents to think about their children to think about their proper development a balanced development of their heart and soul and body heart mind soul body together has to be taken care of unfortunately nowadays majority of the parents they are concerned about the well being of their children in terms of the dunya in terms of the world so they spend all their energies upon their children so that their worldly life becomes better but at the same time they undermine or neglect the fundamentally most important element of success that is the success of the akhirah so in this session we are going to discuss about that what are the particular important things that will help us to reach our children according to the islamic perspective so that their development is based on a balanced approach balance the approach of focusing upon the demands of the body demands of the soul demands of the mind demands of the uh, the heart of, of our children allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran inna ma amwalukum aw inna ma auladukum amwalukum fitra indeed your children and your wealth is a is a means of test for you so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given many things to us and all these things are a means of test as allah says in this verse specifically inna ma auladukum wa amwalukum fitna indeed your children and your wealth is a fitna is a source of test for you and imam al-ghazali says rahimahullah a child is a trust in the hands of his parents and his heart is a pure vessel that may be filled with both good and good and evil Muslim parents should make their children use it to good morals from the very beginning of their lifetime. A father should inculcate good morality in his child in all aspects of life, in eating, drinking, clothing, speaking, and contacting with the others in general. He should teach him the Quran, the Sunnah, and stories of the pious people, so that he can learn good morality through practical examples and learn to love and respect the people of righteousness and piety. A father should reward and praise his child for every praiseworthy act he does. It is apt to encourage him to keep, keep steadfast in the way of goodness. However, if the child commits mistake, it is not necessary to punish him in the first time, but if he repeats it, he may be blamed, but privately. A child should be prevented from sleeping during the daytime because it leads to sloth and inactivity. For the same reason, he should be familiarized with with exercise and action we should be prevented from go- doing certain blameworthy acts which are wide spread among ill raised children such as such as spitting and yawning in the presence of others talkativeness indecent words and impolite expressions and the like we should also be taught how to obey and respect his parents and teachers sahal ibn abdullah reported that when he was only 3 years old his maternal uncle muhammad ibn sawar taught him how to mention Allah in his heart by saying the following words without pronouncing them factually Allah is with me Allah is looking at me Allah is witnessing my actions Sahar's uncle told him to say these words repeatedly every day always in the same way Sahar said he did so and in a short time he began to feel a special kind of sweetness stimulated by the repetition of these words from them he learned how to be conscious of allah all the time and this helped him to be a good worshiper of allah throughout his lifetime whoever witness 
the hereafter through his heart and by means of certainty, his attention becomes entirely attached to it and he pays no attention to worldly life and its pleasures. Anyone who experiences this certainty based witnessing of the hereafter should exert his effort to keep and straightly to keep on straightly in his way to it. Still, this requires that he should fulfill three conditions to abandon to abandon wrongdoing completely, to seek a well versed scholar to be his guide in the way lest devils should distract him from it, and thirdly, to adhere to privacy in matters of worship. This is a brief account of the method and, and should be applied by those who seek hereafter. So, so these are the important things which uh, Imam al-Ghazali has mentioned regarding the training of our children, that how, to, how, we can, how we are supposed to raise our children according to the Islamic teachings. As uh, we know that the children, they are a trust with the parents. Everything which we owe in this dunya is a trust with us. Whether tangible or intangible, tangible in terms of our, our material possessions or our children, they are tangible assets, tangible blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or uh, intangible like knowledge, taqwa and other things which are with a person's heart. So they are all trust with us. So we are in this dunya, we are the trust keepers and we have to keep this trust. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us about this trust on the Day of Judgment. Of all the different trusts which Allah has entrusted to us, the important trust which is entrusted to us is our children. So they are in our hands and it's, it's up to us how do we raise them. It's up to the parents either to, be, to make them the pious souls, to achieve the heights of being al-nafs al mutmainna the soul which is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is pleased with him. Or it is upon the parents to make, his, make their children as having the nafs ammara, the commanding soul. The steering is in the hands of the parents. So it's up to them to direct, to find out the direction for their children. And for this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us, Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam kullukum ra'iyun wa kullukum mas'ool an ra'iyatihi every one of you is responsible and every one of you is accountable about his subordinates so the head of the family is responsible and accountable for his family members Allah will ask him that how did you make the preparations how did you raise your children what precautions or what measures you took in order to inculcate the Islamic values into their hearts and minds? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask about it. So it is a trust with us. And the heart of a child, as Imam al-Ghazali has given a beautiful example, that his heart is a pure vessel that may be filled with both good and evil. And it depends upon our children, the parents. But unfortunately, most of the parents, what they expect from their children to be the money minting machines. They exert all their effort to get them the, the, the so-called secular education. I'm not opposing this education, but what, the, what problem is, which I'm trying to highlight over here is that uh, initially we spent all our efforts, all our energy upon the children in terms of dunya. So that they get a good education. Through good education, they will get a good degree. Through good degree, they will get a good job. So get, by getting a good job, they will have a good life. Good life means to say the material life. During the, during the course of all this, it's a long process. During this process, what is missing? The ultimate success, the ultimate development. There's a development of soul and mind. Soul and heart and mind. We are not just, as I said, always say, we are not on just lump of clay. We are more than that. And our, our existence is manifested not through, not through our physical appearance, rather our spiritual appearance. How strong spiritually we are, that's important. Though we do not deny the importance of the physical health, 
but the, what is more important, especially nowadays, that we need to focus upon this important aspect that we have to focus upon the to, to develop a balanced approach in order to raise our kids. And uh, our Salaf as Salihun, they, they took enormous care about raising their children. They knew that their children could be our Sadaqah Jariyah, the best continuous reward after our death. As Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, that there are three things. insan, When a person passes away, in amaluhu, all his actions are cut off. They are seized. Illa min thalath, except the three. One, sadaqatun jariya, a continuous charity he has, uh, he has done in his lifetime. Or his children do for him. That's also possible. Sadaqa jariya, or waladun salihun yadullah. He left behind a, 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 a pious and righteous progeny, righteous children who make dua for him after his death. This dua, this application is going to benefit him even after his death. And the third thing is how the knowledge, the knowledge which he taught the people. And that knowledge will benefit him after even after his death. So in this hadith, one of the things is waladun salihun. So the biggest asset which a person can make for himself or herself is to inculcate the good values into the children. If a person is not inculcating the good values into the children, then ultimately he will be just, he will be raised in such a way when he is grown up, he won't have the value for these values. The only values he has for the wealth because we have helped him raise in such a way that he developed the love for the dunya. We wanted him to have more and more money. But I always put it in, as a money minting machine. We want him to be a money minting machine so that he get he, he get more and more money. But the money is not everything in our life. Undoubtedly, it is important, but it is not our. It's uh, we can say it is our need, but not our objective. Wealth is our need, but not our objective. Because we are here in this dunya, we have many needs that can be fulfilled only when we have uh, we have the required amount of the wealth. But beside it, it is not everything. So unfortunately, the curriculum which has been developed for for the decades together, rather for the many centuries now, even after the colonization. Our curriculum is altogether the same. There is no change in it. But some elements of moral education, they call it. They put one or two subjects. But the main stream subjects are just for the dunya and nothing else. So, we need to take care of our children right from the beginning. Like as, as I said before, that Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, that a father should inculcate good morality in his child in all aspects of life. Like how to eat, how to drink, how to clothe, how to speak, how to have contacts with other people in general. And more importantly, teaching him the Quran and Sunnah. We are teaching our children and when they are a child, we are teaching them the Quran and Sunnah. Quran up to the level that they should be able to recite. That's not enough. That's the first step towards teaching the Quran. But we think it is the last step. Many a people I ask you that, have you, have you read the Quran? Hardly I, I got the answer, no. 99.99% they said yes, yes, yes. Then it would be followed by another question by me. Okay, tell me the meaning of this verse. No, no, no. We don't know because we haven't, we haven't uh, learned the meanings of the Quran. Then what type of Quran you have learned? So you say that we have learned the recitation of the Quran. Don't say we have learned the Quran. One is learning the Quran and second is learning the recitation of the Quran. If we ch teach our ch children how to pronounce the words, how to pronounce the alphabet, how to pronounce the words, but we don't say them the meanings of the words. So they'll be able to read any book, any English book, 
any sonnet of Shakespeare, they will be able to read any piece of literature. But at the same time, they won't be knowing anything what they are reading. So teaching English means that we teach them how to recite it and how to, uh, how to get its meaning as well. Unfortunately, all over the Muslim world, it's my personal uh, experience in a way that I get the feedback from the people, the friends of different countries. I found this almost everywhere. Yes, we are very keen to, to teach our children the Quran. But what? We are not keen to teach them the Quran. We are keen to teach them the recitation of the Quran alone. That was the first step towards the understanding of the Quran, towards learning the Quran. But we think it is our last step. All over the world, there might be exceptions, but this is what I'm saying. It's a dominant wave and dominant trend is this. That they, we teach our children, we think we teach them the Quran. Actually, we are teaching them how to recite the Quran. So it is important that we give enough attention to us. So the so reading, yes, reading, we need to just learn the Quran. But at the same time, know the meanings of the Quran. And now they are before, uh, it was very difficult. Now it is very easy. We have many a teachers who can teach the Arabic language. If now the stage has passed, it's not necessary for those who have passed the stage that there are many translations of the Quran, tafsir of the Quran. People must consult their respective scholars, seeking their opinion. Because connection with the scholar is immense, immensely important. In order to keep our, our spiritually healthy, it's important to have connection with the scholars and give, seek the guidance from them. Ask them, that what tafsir should I consult? What tafsir will benefit me more? Because taste is different and there are different types of tafsir, different types of, of the commentaries on the Quran. So a person should need to find out his or her taste before reading any, any of the tafsir. So what I was saying that uh, it is immensely important for us to give full attention towards the training of the children, especially their a spiritual training, for worldly training, for raising them as, as far as the modern uh, standards are concerned. It's easy because everything is available. But what is missing is overall balanced, holistic approach of raising our children. And uh, one of the method, okay, so one of the method uh, how to raise the child according to the teaching of the Islam is that uh, uh, fa father or the parents they must reward the children when, whenever they do good they must reward them this is one of the way to, to make them familiar with the good deeds with the good things so f first thing is that when, whenever we see our children doing something good we should reward them accordingly so that they will have, they will realize the importance of the good deeds as when they are doing good in their academics so we are very happy so we give the gifts to them so they realize the importance of this academics they feel that yes this is a thing i need to spend my energy on i need to make my efforts upon likewise if we see our children doing something good developing a good nature or good character, we should reward them. Yes, you have done this. Well done. Encourage them, applaud them, appreciate them. And this will help them to, this will help them to feel the importance of these good deeds. So this is one of the method which uh, Imam Al-Ghazali has also prescribed that uh, that the father should reward and praise his child for every praiseworthy act he does. It's not that for if he comes, he says, uh, Baba or Mama, Mama I, want to, I want to pray. Okay, go. Means not giving any... I mean, he says this, I want to pray. Oh, you really want to pray? Alhamdulillah. Encourage a lot. So that he feel that, yes, this is something I should, I should do. I need to do it. On the other hand, what we do? 
our our approaches almost many a times it is depreciating we don't appreciate our children we don't appreciate them to perform the good deeds so imam al ghazali rahimahullah has given a beautiful this uh, tip and uh, this is apt to encourage him to keep steadfast in the way of goodness however if the child commits some mistake it's not necessary to punish him in the lifetime but if he repeats it it may be blamed but privately so that he will not feel offended the second thing which helps us to raise our children according to the islamic teachings is that uh, they should be prevented from sleeping during the daytime as imam al ghazali rahimahullah says that it leads to sloth and inactivity for the same reason he should be fam- familiarized it with exercise and action yes o- over sleep is not good even for the health Uh, especially for the spiritual health as ulama say that uh, if a person wants to achieve the stage of being a friend of allah subhanahu wa taala if a person wants to be waliullah then four things are important for him first thing taqlilul kalam that he must uh, decrease his speech means he should not talk excessively he should not be talkative he should speak only when necessary second taqlilul ta'am he should uh, decrease the amount of the food as well he should not be overeater excessive amount of the food should be avoided so taqlilul kalam taqlilul ta'am taqlilul manam third one is that he should uh, he should decrease the amount of the he should decrease the amount of the sleep as well the sleeping hours must be shortened because long hours of the sleep uh, will is not good for the health for the spiritual health of a person and it also develops the laziness in a person when a person all the time is sleepy so it develops the laziness letharginess in a person which is very difficult which is which is we can say uh, it's not good for the spiritual health of a person is laziness is uh, it's the first step towards the inaction and uh, for believer he must be always active so that there is no laziness no lethargy overcome him so that uh, it stops him to perform the good deeds so exercise and uh, to be in action always so we should make our children familiar with this thing and they should realize the abhorrence or the the obnoxious character of being lazy because it not only impacts the the worldly activities it also has a negative effect upon the spiritual activities as well and then uh, imam al ghazali rahimahullah also suggest that he should be prevented from doing certain blame worthy acts which are widespread among ill raised children such as spitting and yawning in the presence of others talkativeness indecent words and impolite expression and the like we should also be taught how to obey and respect his parents and teachers so these values when we inculcate in our children this will help a lot our children to develop their personality on the positive lines and these small they it they seem to be small things but they are very uh, effective and essential important for the upbringing of our children this will help them to 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 develop a moderate and a balanced approach and a balanced life and they are able to strike a balance between the uh, between the dunya and the akhirah so it is immensely important that we need to train them and more importantly is that teaching them the oneness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making them feel the presence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time that allah is watching over us whatever we do he is watching over us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about luqman rahimahullah and the nasiha the advices he gave, he gave to his son in the light of surah al-luqman which is mentioned in the quran so first thing he taught his son la tushrik billah do not associate partner to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so first thing we need to teach our children the concept of our god the concept of allah and then the abhorrence of the shirk that is the worst form of all disobedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is associating partner to him 
Tawheed must be inculcated into the hearts and minds of our children so that they live their lives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the, from the tender ages, they must know their creator. They must know the, the one who gave the, 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 all the blessings to us. And at the same time, they must be uh, taken to the practice as well. They must feel, they must be made to feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, there's uh, one, of, uh, one of the pious person in the Indian subcontinent was uh, Sayyid Ali Hijuri rahimahullah. Is also known as Data Ganj Baksh. Uh, Ganj Shakkar also. Shakkar uh, in Urdu language means uh, the sugar. Why he is known for, uh, as the Data, Data Ganj, the man of sugar? Why? Uh, there's a story related to him that when he was a child and his mother raised him on the Islamic lines. And his, his mother wanted to inculcate into, the, into, into his mind the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever he needs in life, he must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he, since children, they are familiar uh, to the sugar and the sweet things. So he used to ask sugar or the sweet things to mother and mother would do one thing. She would spread the prayer, prayer mat and beneath the prayer mat, she would put some sweets or some sugar. Then she would say to him, you go and you perform two rakat of salah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, you give me the sugar, you give me the sweets. Then he would perform the salah, then he would make dua, supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he would lift the prayer mat and there he would find the sweets and the sugar. This is how she wanted to inculcate this value into, into her child. That whatever he, whatever he requires and needs in his life, he must ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one day... Uh, Sayyid Ali Hijuri rahimahullah, he went along with his friends uh, to visit a place. They went to, for, they went, went for the outing and uh, when the time of Salah came, he said to his friends, so let me ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide us the sweets. They said, how come? How is it possible that Allah will send us the sweets? He said, yes, I do it every day. He, he asked them, okay, you get all, all of you get the prayer mats and then spread on the earth. Then they, they, they made the ablution and then they performed the salah. Back at the home, mother was thinking, Ya Allah, today my secret will be exposed. Oh, up to this moment, I tried to make his iman unto you. Now, from now onwards, it's up to you. So she was making a lot of dua. And here, he started the praying salah. And uh, after they finished the salah, he lifted the one corner of the prayer mat and there were the sweets, a number of, a uh, bunch of sweets. And this is karamatu awliya, awliya illa. So karama, we believe in the karamat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this to happen, to strengthen our iman. So first and foremost thing we need to inculcate into the hearts of and minds of our children is the love of Allah is the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should do everything for the sake of Allah. We are here only for the sake of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us to this dunya just for himself. Uh, as uh, Sahal ibn Abdullah, he reports that, that when he was just three years old, his maternal uncle, Muhammad ibn Suwar, taught him how to mention Allah in his heart by saying, the, the following words without pronouncing them factually, Allah is with me. Just having the feeling that Allah is with me. Allah is looking at me. As Allah says in the Quran, Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara. Doesn't he know that Allah is watching over him? Ayahsab alam yarahu ahad. Does he think that nobody is watching over him? Many verses in the Quran. And Allah is witnessing my actions. Whatever I'm doing, Allah is watching over it. And Sahal's uncle told him to say these words repeatedly every day, always in the same way. So Sahal said, to, Sahal said, he did so and in a short time he began to feel a special kind of sweetness stimulated by the repetition of these words. From then, from them he learned how to be conscious of Allah, conscious of Allah all the time and helped this, help, and this helped him to be a good worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout his life. 
So these are the ways we can inculcate the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, into the hearts and minds of our children. And this is immensely important. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a tawfiq so that we inculcate the love of Allah, the concept of Allah, the concept of His oneness into the hearts and minds of our children. And then again we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill up the, the hearts and minds of our children with His love and devotion. Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to train our children perfectly, both in terms of dunya and in terms of akhirah. Amin ya rabbal alamin. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yisifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.